really trying to put pressure uh, in towards uh, uh, Magnus's king, basically just making Magnus a bit nervous. And, and this is one of uh, Oluresa's skills that Magnus has praised a lot, is his ability to create uh, trickiness, to create tactics uh, in, in trying to defend uh, positions. Yeah. And I have seen previously that uh, Oliveira has managed to win games where he had losing positions because he can be so tricky uh, when creating attacks against the opponent's king. And that's precisely what he's trying to do here. Yeah, absolutely. Resourcefulness is one of Ali Reza's great qualities. I mean, I could see that in that banter uh, match between him and Carlson in 2020. I mean, he um, has an incredible uh, knack for drumming up counterplay in bad positions, kind of like Nakamura. Um, and let's see, what, what is the position on the board right now? So much is happening on the king side. Unfortunately, white is attacking without the bishop on b2 really being involved in the game. So everything is is nice about the position, but that bishop that we've been talking about for a while is still quite poor. Um, it's on being the other blocked hand, by the own pawn, whereas uh, Oliveira's bishop is pointing in towards the white king. However, which king is the most unsafe? Because while Oliveira has a bishop pointing uh, towards whites, Magnus has, you know, a queen, a knight, and a rook in the general um, area where, where Black's king is residing. So I'm I'm not even sure that it's uh, Magnus's king in trouble. I I think it might be Oliveira's that's uh, feeling the draft uh, around its um, where it should be protected. Yeah, I like how Magnus moved his king to g2 to a light square. Oh, and this Ali might be the big breakthrough head. for Magnus. His knight moving, uh, attacking the pawn on h6. And this pawn is very difficult to defend for Oliveira. If he moves his rook, he will allow the knight to attack both the king and queen at the same time. If his king moves up, then his king will be forced back down by white's pawn. So he has no way of defending that pawn. He tries um, uh, he does try moving the king up. The pawn does step forward. The king has to hide, but Magnus uh, manages to capture an important pawn. Then the rook can move because now there's no more knight coming in with a double attack on king and queen. But as Magnus retreats his knight back from where it came, Magnus has successfully eliminated a, a black pawn. And it's not just any pawn. It's one of the most crucial defenders of the Black King. Yep, Magnus has broken through on that side of the board and he has a completely winning position now. Oh, and that Bishop A3 move, it's so painful. You know, finally at the end, you know, when the position's already winning, he gets to improve his, his, his last piece. And now there's just nothing redeeming about Ali Reza's position anymore. Brilliant move here from Magnus. We've been wondering what he's going to do about this bishop being blocked by its own pawn. And he chooses just the right moment to come in, putting pressure on Black's bishop, forcing the trade there. And when the trade happens, Magnus is going to be uh, getting his queen pointing towards the Black Knight. But more importantly, the, when the bishop has moved, it means that the white knight can now safely step into the middle of the board uh, next. Uh, Oliveira trying to get his queen up into the attack, making some final threats towards the white king. Magnus now has to make the assessment of whether or not he can move his knight into this powerful position in the middle of the board. Uh, Magnus needs to make sure he's not going to lose uh, well, he, that he's not going to allow the, the Black Queen to make a lot of uh, tricky checks in doing so. Instead, Magnus first uses his Rook to push the Queen away. Uh, the Queen steps over uh, <laughs> back to the right side of the board. Um, now Magnus gets his Knight in to this amazing position. And just look at White's pieces. Even if Magnus wasn't up a pawn, he would be completely winning here because his pieces are just dominating black right now. Yeah, that knight is just amazing. There's like, you know, sometimes you're down a pawn, you have counterplay, but in this position, um, you not only are down a pawn, but you have like no threats whatsoever. Your king is very bad. The F6 pawn is super powerful. So I think Magnus is going to wrap this up 
really quickly. And Magnus coming with his queen, uh, Oliveira trying his best to stay alive. But Black's pieces are just so passive in addition to White's uh, placements just being so dominating. And <laughs> I, I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. Even though, uh, even if Magnus didn't have this extra pawn on F6, he would have a winning position because uh, the placement of White's pieces is just so superior to Black's. Yeah, no, overall, I just like the way Magnus played this game. You know, if we look, we've been following it from the beginning, and I just felt like he always had it under control, always had like a little bit of a better idea of what to do, how to arrange his pieces. And then, you know, Ali Reza positionally made some mistakes, and Magnus just, just, uh, was just merciless in exploiting that. And Magnus now taking his time. He, he can do that, of course, uh, considering that he had a pretty massive time advantage the whole game. Uh, he steps with his rook over to the right side. Alivresa trying to hide his king in the corner. Uh, I'm expecting Magnus to start trying to capture more black pawns in the very near future, moving his uh, queen up. Uh, and, and getting rid of this uh, G5 pawn. Magnus yeah, is really taking to, his time. To watch out for, you cannot quite maybe go to G, G4 yet because the black queen would take the pawn on on F6. So what did he just play? He played uh, the queen to E3. He's going after that G5 pawn. This is the reason why he moved his rook earlier so that the rook uh, takes um, control of that protection duty. Uh, of the pawn on f6. Uh, Oliveira once again trying to move his queen up into an attacking position, trying to give checks on the white king. Uh, maybe Magnus can just move his rook one step up. Yes, he does do that. He saw that Oliveira wanted to use the c2 square for his queen, so he just says no. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't yeah. even give him like a sliver of counterplay. I mean, I'm sure taking on G5 was fine and then you could block an F2 and it still looked completely winning, but Magnus doesn't even let him have that. Yeah, Alureza now uh, pushing his pawn forward. Uh, he realizes that if this pawn is going to be lost anyway, I might I might, as, I might try to double uh, the, uh, the white pawns. And Magnus just says, I can take this pawn later. Uh, I'm not in a rush. Uh, and here Magnus moves in with his knight, giving a check on the king. The king moves away from the check. Magnus maneuvering his knight to a superior position. The knight was incredibly well placed on e5. But Magnus is saying, I want the queen there instead. And uh, Oliveira resigns the game. Uh, Magnus, just a dominating performance from him. It kind of looked like Oliveira never stood a chance. It, it was a fairly equal position from the opening, but White always had that little edge, that little bit of an easier position to play. Uh, and the the opening also uh, gave Magnus a big time advantage. Uh,